What's up guys, hanging out in the fish room. I got a lot done in the shop this weekend and I'm super excited to show you guys some updates coming soon. I know, I know a bunch of you guys have been dying for the updates and they will come, but I'm just kind of being a Nazi with some things like holes in the walls, um, just, I'm OCD about things looking nice and just the appearance of it, just, uh, anyways. Today's topic is the tiger shovelnose catfish. The tiger shovelnose is one of the most popular predator catfish in the industry. And the reason is because they are absolutely stunning. They have like a tiger stripe uh, formation and uh, they are an elongated fish and they get massive. Huge shout out to Josh Rangel. I want to, uh, he gave me this awesome footage we're going to be looking at today. And uh, I guess instead of me just babbling, looking at my face, let's jump to the footage. All right, guys, other than these fish getting massively huge, this isn't a tremendously hard fish to take care of because it's a South American fish and it's an elongated fish. So it's going to be moving very fast. So I would advise um, you're going to need some lids because these things when they want to just take off there's just no stopping them it's a lot like pike and other elongated fish all right next let's talk about their feeding habits the tiger shovel nose is a very opportunistic feeder like other south american catfish they are on the search for meaty and protein rich foods they are commonly found hunting at night in a nocturnal style if you find that your tiger shovel nose catfish isn't getting food because all the other fish are eating it, it may be helpful to feed it when the lights go off. That way it can kind of use its senses and find the food. Like this works with a lot of catfish that aren't getting food and it just kind of helps solve the problem if it's, if it's getting really thin in size and you don't see it commonly eating when you feed the other fish. It's very common to feed like uh, cut up tilapia, earthworms, and anything protein rich that kind of sinks to the bottom. You could use uh, fish pellets, but make sure they are sinking because these guys are most commonly found on the bottom, hence catfish, bottom dweller. I would also advise because this is a catfish to, hi to have some hiding spots because catfish are mostly nocturnal and they do like dark spots during the day and if your tank is like heavily lit like Josh's here, I always like to have like some big tubes in there or just some dark spots where they can kind of just get out of that bright sunlight and give them the choice to go hide if they want to. Other than that, these are pretty easy fish to take care of. I must admit, whenever I go to the fish store, I'm always wanting to buy one, but I'm just, I, I need to remember that these things get massively huge, and that's going to be your biggest setback when getting one, is just finding a tank big enough, because these things can grow over three feet long in the home aquarium, and you not only need a huge tank, but you need good water parameters for these huge fish like this, and it's, it, it is almost a like part-time job keeping up with like huge predators like in this tank itself. So huge shout out to Josh. Thanks for letting me use this video. Uh, stellar, fish, stellar fish keeping here, fella. I'm super proud of you. Huge fan. I'm super excited to watch this tiger shovel nose catfish grow up. And I'm sure Josh will be sending me updates because we're always sending each other messages. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about these fish. So yeah, that concludes the video. I just want to preach one more time that these fish get massive and you, if you're thinking about getting one, you need to plan on upgrading your tank because a lot of people get a small tank and uh, we have plans to upgrade. I'm going to get a 300, Chris. I'm going to get a 300 like soon. I'm going to get one. That seems to be the ongoing thing in this industry. Like people kind of like speak what they're going to do, but it never really happens and it bugs the heck out of me. But some of you guys, uh, it does actually happen. Like Josh, in this case, uh, huge shout out. Thanks for letting me use this footage. You are doing awesome fish care. You have stingrays and excellent water quality. He told me the other day that doing water changes is absolutely like his zen because it gives, it gives the fish just, just knowing that you're giving them the best habitat possible. And that was really music to my ears because I feel the same way and sometimes uh, a lot of people don't, you, there's two kinds of people in this industry sometimes when keeping predators. 
there's the people that really love the big fish and want to do the water changes and give them an awesome place to live because most of the time they're in crappy parameters being kept and then there's like the the people that own like the bulldogs and just own these fish because they're badass and they're hunters oh look i'll drop in this this goldfish and it will just tear it to shreds and let's make a video on it i'm gonna quit blabbing um i could blab for days and days and days you guys know that but updates coming on the fish store and i also want to give a shout out to all the patreon donations so far there's like 14 people donating and that's going to be growing because with the fish store updates i'm hoping that it gets some people excited and just uh you guys can help carry me through creating my dream essentially so without further ado 